Okay, I'll jump in. If people join, they join. Um, good morning. Thank you guys for coming on Saturday. Um, I'm Leah. I believe I've met all of you at this point. Um, but let me just give you kind of a brief history of why I'm even talking about nutrition. So I've coached CrossFit since 2009. And um, beginning in 2012, I was part of CrossFit seminar staff, which basically travels the world and credentials new trainers and delivers um, information about the CrossFit methodology. So I taught just over 200 seminars to aspiring and existing CrossFit trainers, and part of the methodology is nutrition. Um, on a personal level, I came into CrossFit thinking I was eating healthy, didn't really have a definition of what that was, and um, have since learned a ton about nutrition to the point where it's become just a huge passion of mine, um, something I've experimented with with myself and worked with clients and giving this talk basically since the time I started coaching CrossFit. So we're gonna focus 100% on like 101. I'm just gonna give you guys kind of some back so you know where we're going. Um, we're gonna start off by talking really high level but just about CrossFit theory, like why we're even having this conversation and what we're trying to achieve by doing CrossFit. Um, how nutrition and CrossFit's nutrition prescription plays into what we're trying to accomplish. And then the last couple of things I wanna hit on are like some strategies and tactics you can take if you wanna apply some of these principles to your own nutrition and life and how to get started on that journey. Um, okay, so let's jump in. So starting with CrossFit theory, um, there is a definition of CrossFit. It's obviously this workout thing that we all do together. Um, but CrossFit is defined as constantly varied. Functional movement. Executed at high intensity. And you guys are probably all familiar with the high intensity piece. That's the piece that makes the workouts suck. Um, makes them really challenging and painful to do sometimes. But the constantly varied, we do something different every day. Um, you'll see the same movements, but they're paired in different ways. We work out really short all the way to really long. Um, and we do movements that are deemed functional, which basically just means they're movements that you see in everyday life. They apply to things that we do outside of the gym. So a squat that we do here is simply like literally how you would get yourself down onto the ground and back up. It's how you sit on the toilet and get off of the toilet. It's how you get out of bed every morning. A deadlift is how you pick stuff up off the ground. A press is simply how you put something up over your head or onto a shelf. And then there's some really cool videos out there that people have put together over the years where it like takes a shot of movements of people doing like clean and jerks in the gym. And then it's like somebody literally picking up their kid and putting them on their shoulder and like tossing them up in the air. It's like, okay, this actually applies to real life. Um, so this is, our, this is our program. This is what we do, constantly varied functional movements. We do it at high intensity, and that's relative to the individual. So my intensity, we can measure it. We measure it with power, force multiplied by distance over time. So we have this data about our workouts, but my intensity is different than yours. It should be relative, and that can change over the course of your life. Okay, so that's kind of just the framework. That's what CrossFit is. Now, the goal of doing CrossFit is that we want to achieve fitness. And guess what? Greg Glassman, who founded this program, had a, has a definition of fitness that has been tested over many years. He started this program in the late 90s, early 2000s. It actually started in Santa Cruz. So we now have however many years of data of people actually performing CrossFit. And his definition of fitness, I'm not gonna write it up here, but it's work capacity across broad time and modal domains. And I wanna break down each one of those little pieces. So work capacity is your ability to do the thing. You can do the work, you can move the object, you can pick up the kid, you can carry the groceries, you can mountain bike for as long as you want to. So you can do a whole bunch of different modalities. Um, sorry, you can do a whole bunch of work. 
work capacity across broad time. Broad time just means that we do things from very, very short, like you do a one rep max deadlift, that takes a mere couple of seconds. All the way out to we do these hero workouts that can take 30, 45, an hour plus. And we want you to be able to have capacity in all of those time domains from really, really short, medium, and long duration events. And then modal domains, I already alluded to it, is just all the different things that we do. No matter what you're tasked with outside of the gym, you should have been exposed to something in the gym that replicates it and makes you able to complete whatever the task is. Now, the beautiful thing or the thing that really struck me when I took my level one and became a trainer um, back in 2009 was that this definition of fitness was actually something that we could put on a graph. We have data about it. And it's, real, it's part of the important part of why we ask that you guys log your workouts. So when you do a one rep max deadlift, if you know today I lifted 100 pounds, in a year from now, if you lifted 150 pounds, guess what? You've got more work capacity. You're able to lift more weight. So we know that this program, the constantly varied functional movements at high intensity, is actually working and making you more fit. So if you take from, the, this is time, this is average power, don't really worry about that. This is your score on the workouts. Zero all the way up to, this could go on for infinity, but let's say one hour. Every workout you've ever done, you could calculate your power and you could plot it on this graph. And the more workouts you've done over the years, the more data points you're gonna have. But what you tend to see is these clusters of data points. So as you move out in time, power necessarily is gonna drop. It's gonna be really high in the really short stuff and it gets lower as we go. But you wind up getting this curve and the area that falls underneath this curve, that's your fitness. That's your work capacity across broad time and modal domains. This is the stuff that you as a human can accomplish, that you can do. So the cool bit about this is we now have people, I've been doing CrossFit for 13 years. I know there's, Rob's been doing it even longer than me. There's people in this room that have been doing it many, many years, and there's some of you guys that are really new to it. But the goal is if we add this third access, axis, which is age, we can start to take fitness across the years of your life and the goal is to increase this area underneath the curve. So I started CrossFit, I was almost 30. I'm 43 now, so I've got 13 years. And throughout that time, from 30 to 35, I could do this again. And I have data because I've been tracking my workouts and I could look and I can see what area is underneath my curve. And I can tell you from 30 to 35, there was more area. I could do more stuff. I could lift more weight. I could do more pull-ups. My times on my workouts had gotten faster in workouts where we're like, do as many rounds as you can in 20 minutes. Guess what, I could do more of them. And that's a good thing. And then we move out and then at age 40, same thing. Am I still getting better at all the stuff? No, because guess what, age is a bitch. And at some point, it just has its way with you. But I am still more fit by this definition at age 43 on, I would argue, everything than on the day that I started when I was almost 30. I'm able to move faster. I can run a faster mile than I could the day I walked in. And that's the goal. So we're trying to increase our fitness over the years of our life. And that is how CrossFit defines health. We want you to be able to do more work and we want you to get that area under your curve as big as possible and hold it up there for as long as you can. Okay, so that's kind of grounded in theory. Now, Greg Glassman back in 2002 wrote a, it was groundbreaking at the time, it was an article called What is Fitness? where he kind of laid out this framework of what he thought fitness is that led to this definition and in it, he outlined this theoretical hierarchy in the development of an athlete. And it basically, it's this pyramid, and at the very bottom of it is nutrition. Above that 
is metabolic conditioning. I'll define all of these in just a second. Above that is gymnastics. Above that is weightlifting and also throwing. Oops. And at the very, very top is sport. And sport was really meant to encompass all the things you do outside of the gym. So these days people think about like, oh, CrossFit is a sport, like the CrossFit games. And it's like, no, not CrossFit. Like, can you go play soccer? Do you feel better playing soccer today? Are you able to play for longer, et cetera, et cetera? Um, can you mountain bike whenever you want to? Can you surf? Can you swim around the wharf? Um, like all the things that you want to do out there in the world, that's sport. And what Greg was saying was that nutrition is the base of this. Nutrition is the foundation. And the thing about this, you guys already heard this quote from Lori, but nutrition speaks to the 23 hours of the day that you're not in the gym. Like, what are you doing outside of here? What are you putting in your body that eventually will fuel all of this training stuff that we do while we're in here? Okay, so metabolic conditioning, that's like your cardio. You can think about that. Like, can you do the workouts without just being obliterated? When I came in, this stuff just crushed me. It, does it get easier? I don't know. It gets easier-ish, but not really. Because you get better, and it still just kind of hurts. So you just learn to love the hurt. Anyway, but after getting our nutrition in line, we need you to have like a metabolic base. Like, do you have some cardio? Then gymnastics just speaks to like, can you control your body in space? So like, do you understand how to squat? And can you get your body in the right positions? Can you do a pull up or a ring row? Um, do you know how to move your own body? Burpees, things like that. So this is body weight stuff. Weightlifting and throwing is like teaching you how to control an external object. So in theory, you've got your nutrition in line. You've got some um, cardiorespiratory endurance. Yeah, you can control your body. Now we give you something else and we say, control this medicine ball or pick up this barbell or put this thing over your head. And then sport, how do you apply that in life? So I don't know about you guys, but when I started, I was very obsessed with like the Metcon piece. Like I wanted to get my cardio. I wanted to learn how to lift weights. I did this kind of backwards. Nutrition was actually the last thing that I started thinking about once I started CrossFit. And I think that's pretty typical. But this can have such a huge impact because as I mentioned, this is what you're doing out there for the other 23 hours of the day. So that's where we're gonna focus. Are there any questions on that theory piece? One question is for recording your workouts. Do you yeah. Use, is there like an app you recommend? There is an app. In fact, I have resources. I'm gonna flip this around. Let me write that down so I don't forget it. Cool, yeah, we use it, uh, the gym uses an app called Beyond the Whiteboard. There's a bunch out there, but we can get you hooked up with an um, account. Makes it very easy. Okay, so let's talk about CrossFit's new nutrition prescription. Um, again, our founder, Greg Glassman, um, put out this statement, world-class fitness in 100 words. And the first sentence of it actually gives a diet prescription which makes sense since he, since he was saying nutrition is the base of the pyramid. It's what we should get in order first. So CrossFit's nutrition prescription, I'm just going to spout it out and write it. Yeah, no, go ahead. It's still, yeah, it's still a data point. Um, and it's something that, that's why we look for trends over periods of time. Yeah. Like the, the other piece of CrossFit, like we're not power lifters. Power lifters or anyone that specializes in a specific thing, they're training for that specific sport. We're trying to be good at everything. Yeah. So you might do a back squat, let's say a five by five back squat one time, and you have some number. Yeah. And then we do it, let's say a month later. What you did in the days prior to that are going to be different 
So you might feel more energetic, you might feel less energetic. I don't know what's going on in your life that time versus the time prior, but you're just looking for overall trends. And the overall trends should start to bump those things up. But yeah, you won't, sadly, we don't PR every single time. In the first like year or so, there's like a really nice, like, I feel great. Like every single time we measure something, it's, you know, it tends to get better faster. And then it just goes like this and you're like fighting for one pound or one second. So yeah, just overall trends. Cool. All right, let me give you the sentence and then we'll break it down. Okay, so CrossFit's nutrition prescription says, eat meats and vegetables. Nuts and seeds. Some fruit. Little starch. And no sugar. Womp womp. And then it says, keep intake to levels that support oops, exercise but not body fat. I'm really feeling like I should have just written that up there before because that took a second. Okay, eat meats and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, and no sugar, and keep intake to levels that support exercise but not body fat. Now, the goal of us with this diet prescription, I'm gonna give you one more theory piece, it has to do with this continuum, another one that Greg laid out. So this continuum is called the sick, well, fit continuum, where you have sick over here on the left, we have well in the center, and then fit over on the right. And the idea is that you could take any measurable health marker, like if you go to the doctor, something that they would measure, and you could plot it along this continuum. So you could take blood pressure, and there's something that your doctor would be like, wow, if your blood pressure is this, then we've got issues, we need to talk about it. There's the average blood pressure, like 120 over 80. And then there's one that would be better than average, like if you're 110 over 65, you're fit. You could do the same with body fat percentage. You could do the same thing with resting heart rate. You could do the thing with bone density. You name the thing, we could plot it along this continuum. And the idea with this diet prescription is that we want to take all of those health markers and move them towards the right. We want to move them over towards fit. And this diet prescription should support that. That's the intention. And we, we talked a lot at level one and level two courses of like, if you think about your families and friends, like almost everybody knows somebody that they would say is kind of over here towards the sick side. Um, that they are, have something going on in their life that could be better. Um, and when we think about society as a whole, we think about things like obesity, type two diabetes, cancer, heart disease, like they're these super prevalent chronic illnesses. Um, and our goal is to move us as far away from those as we possibly can. And we do that twofold. We do that with fitness, but we also do that with our nutrition and to get our health markers going in that direction. So if I break down this list of foods that CrossFit's nutrition prescription gives, the first ones, meats and vegetables, nuts and seeds, fruit, starches, and then the old no sugar, it's, it's exactly that, yeah. Um, and I, I always hit on that. It's no added sugar. Like fully recognize there are naturally occurring sugars in fruits and starches and vegetables, all good. 
no added sugar. And I'll get to that in a little more detail in a second. But if you guys look at this list, like what, how do you categorize those foods? Like what words come to mind or thoughts? Are there any? Meats? Not each one, just kind of as a, as a whole. Natural? Proteins, carbs, and fats. Fuel. Whole foods, real foods. Not processed foods, you're getting vitamins, minerals, fiber. The idea being that these are real whole foods. And the I, I got one, no inflammation. Less inflammation. Less inflammation, yeah. Oftentimes people will see less inflammation. Mm -hmm. The real goal there is when I, when I mention these chronic diseases that are all too prevalent in today's society that put people over here on the sick side, like we, ha we as a society have access to these hyper processed foods. They are affordable, they are freaking everywhere. They are, they've been shown in many people to be addictive. Um, and they are pushing us in this direction. So the goal with these foods is to cut out the processed foods. And in doing that, we're often reducing sugar significantly, no added sugar. Now, Bailey says protein, carbs, and fat. So we're looking, our prescription to eat for wellness and get us moving away from sickness is to eat real whole foods. Now, she talked about, she mentioned macronutrients. And when I started CrossFit, nobody knew what a freaking macronutrient was or like protein, carbs, and fat. It was like foreign. Um, I don't know. You guys probably have at least heard those terms, but let's just make sure, just in case we're not on the same page. So there are three categories of macronutrients. They are protein, carbohydrates, and fat. And just to make sure that we're all on the same page with what those are, let's break these down into their predominant macronutrient category. So most, if not all of these, will have a combination of proteins, carbohydrates, and fat, but there is one that's predominant in each category. So meat, I hope is an obvious one. What's the predominant macronutrient? There can be a lot of fat if it's delicious, but yes, mostly protein, certainly fat. Vegetables, predominant macronutrient. Carbohydrates. Um, have you guys heard about carbohydrate load? Like how much carbohydrate per serving? Okay, so vegetables, because they have a lot of fiber, um, they are less carbohydrate dense, meaning you could eat a whole bunch of them and not take in a whole bunch of carbohydrate um, versus something like fruit, which is also a carbohydrate, but per serving, you're going to get more of a carbohydrate load. So, so let's say you, you could eat two cups of broccoli or you could eat half an apple. And on the nutrition, like if you look at the nutrition breakdown, you're getting the same number of grams of carbohydrates in those two things. So if you like quantity, fill up on vegetables, a little less fruit. Um, nuts and seeds, what's the predominant macronutrient on that one? Fat. Yep, fat. And this is not an all-inclusive list. We would include in the nuts and seeds category other sources of fat, like things like avocado, olives, um, your cooking oils, things of that nature. So fats. Um, starches, that's like potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, if you eat grains, what's the predominant macronutrient there? Carbohydrates, cool. And then the old no sugar. And just as we alluded to, that's no added sugar, but that's not just white table sugar, it's anything you might try to replace your sugar with. So that could be like your Truvia, Stevia, honey, agave, nectar, maple syrup. I hate to tell you, your body doesn't really recognize the difference between like white sugar and those other sugar substitutes. So our prescription is no added sugar. Cool. When we get to like implementation, we can talk about like how we talk about this. But this is like gold standard, OK? <laughs> this is the no fun diet. Um, <laughs> There is not dairy in there. And so 
if I rewind many years, have you heard of the paleo diet? Yeah, well, also keto. So many of the things. Yes. Okay, so here's the deal. CrossFit's prescription has balance across the macronutrients, so you're getting protein, carbohydrates, and fat. This list, by nature of these words, some fruit, little starch, also starts to put some parameters around the quantity, but the goal is to have balance across protein, carbohydrates, and fat. And the reason that the word some fruit is there is that carbohydrate load piece. We would basically say to eat for wellness, eat as many freaking vegetables as you want. Good luck overeating those. Eat less fruit than you do a vegetable. That's some fruit. And then when we get to starches, they have more of a carbohydrate load. So we would say eat less starch than you do a fruit. That is little starch. Let's keep it there. Like keep it simple. Now, we'll talk about different things, but to Dairy's point specifically, I can't tell you what the optimal diet is for you. We are all special snowflakes as humans. Sadly, you are an N of one, and you need to do some experimentation with yourself to see what works best for you within these general principles. No one is going to suffer from eating a combination of real whole foods. That will be good for all of us as humans what exact ratios you need, how much fat, how much carb, how much protein, that's very individual and we'll talk about ways to start to go down that path if you want to. But this is a great starting point, just picking from these foods. What you got? It's like I seeded you. Yes. <laughs> Whole but then my other question past that, but we can get to it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to forget it. Yeah, so that's going to be the general answer is no, not really. No, not really. That's a very individual, like if you go so far down the path that you're weighing and measuring your food and you know what you're taking in every day. So it's sort of sliding scale. So we're gonna start really big picture, like can we generally cut out the sugars and try to eat real whole foods, that's step one. Um, step two would be starting to think about do I know what I'm, how much I'm actually intaking of each of these? And then as we get to the bottom of the funnel of really tweaking and trying to super optimize, then you would start thinking about things like that potentially. Cool. But I will get to macro breakdown just as a general principle. Not by quantity. Um, CrossFit's advice is like we are finely tuned mechanisms as humans. Our advice is drink when you're thirsty, don't when you're not. Sorry? Not even that. Coffee is fine. And really, even like, People are always like, what about alcohol? What about blah, 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 whatever the thing is. The idea is that you find a nutritional protocol that is sustainable for you. And I'm getting out of order here, but when I talk about like strategies and tactics for you as a human, one of the best things you can do is think, should I take on whatever the thing I'm gonna try? Can I see myself doing it for a year? And if you can't, it's probably too extreme. You're gonna try it for a couple weeks and then you're gonna throw it by the wayside and swing the pendulum back. So when you're thinking for yourself, like what is a thing I could do? Can you see yourself doing it every day for a year? And for me, I'm, is alcohol optimal? I'm never gonna tell you that it's optimal. But am I gonna tell you that I found a way to fit it into my nutritional like plan in a way that is sustainable for me? Yeah. So. Just, you guys have to make that call for yourself. But no, it's not part of our gold standard alcohol prescription. Not on the list. Okay, um, I was going somewhere and then I lost, oh, paleo and dairy. So when I started, paleo was like the trend and then it like keto became the, there's always a try it, N of one. If, it, if it's a thing that you're like, I think I could do this forever, for a year, for two years, for the rest of my life, it's worth a shot, try it. Um, paleo was a thing at the time. Paleo cuts out dairy, legumes, and grains all together. 
Um, I did that for probably a decade. I am still pretty loose, like close to paleo, but I found that yogurt fits into my nutritional protocol. I f look, feel, perform well on it. My health markers are good on it, so I eat some yogurt. That was a personal, just like experimentation. To try it without it, add it back in, see what happens. That removal reintroduction kind of like self-experimentation is gonna be my answer for almost anything somebody asks, like, what about? What about alcohol? What about dairy? What about grains? Um, should I eat bananas? For some reason, at one point, people were weird about bananas. Like, try it. See how you look, how you feel, how you perform. Okay, any other questions on kind of the eating for wellness, whole, real, non-processed foods? Two to three weeks, that's a great question. I'll also, let me make sure I have that noted. I think I have it back here as well. Yes, I do. Yes, we'll get to that in more detail. Okay, let me take this one step further um, and just touch on the second sentence, which says, keep intake to levels that support exercise but not body fat. So this bit right here, is speaking to the quality whoop, of the foods that you're eating. And that's an excellent place to start and maybe to live forever. But if you're talking about experimenting on yourself and there's something that you don't like, like you've done this and you're making some evaluations on how do you look, how do you feel? How's your performance? And that could be in the gym, that could be in your sport, whatever it is you choose to do outside of the gym. And then how are any of your health markers if you're tracking on anything specifically? And if all of these are moving in the right direction and you're happy, keep doing what you're doing. Don't change anything. But if you look at this and you're like, I don't know, my body composition isn't where I want it to be, or I don't know, my energy is not so good, I'm feeling just like foggy, whatever. So I'm not happy about something. The gym or my sport is not going in the way that I want. If you're unhappy with any of these, then we can start to look at this and make some tweaks. But to do that, we have to have some data to go off of. This gives us this quality piece, but the next step says keep intake to levels that support exercise, but not body fat. And that's where you have to start quantifying the food that you're taking in so that you have the data to make changes if there's something that you're not happy with. So that is how we start to optimize, ideally, these real whole foods and looking at the quantity that you're eating. Now, back in the day, I don't know if some of you will remember this, CrossFit talked about the zone diet. Um, and it was literally just a way to quantify your food. It took the macronutrients and it broke them down into 40% of your calories coming from carbohydrates, 30% of your calories coming from protein, and 30% coming from fat. Nowadays, obviously, we've got apps. So the zone diet is sort of like, you don't really need it. It's like a little more work than you probably need to do. You need to download an app. Question? Or is this just? So I can't tell you that. So um, let me flip this around, because we're already going down this path. So we're gonna now talk about how to optimize this eating quality foods um, in the right quantities and where to start to figure that piece out because it's gonna be different for everyone. So let me flip this around. Vanna White-esque, ta-da! Okay. What's that? Vanna White. I still didn't hear. Vanna White. Uh, Vanna White. I haven't seen Vanna White in a long time. Did you say she got old? She's gotta be old. I mean, she has to be, right? <laughs> Aren't we 
all getting old though? That's the thing. Okay, so here's how, some ways to start. So step number one, you need some basic tools to do this. So I wanna prepare you um, to even, if you're thinking about like, I wanna do something with my nutrition. That's your decision to make. You don't have to do anything with your nutrition, but there are some basic tools you need if you wanna get started. Number one is I would download a food tracking app. Um, I use one, I'll write a few up here. And this is if you wanna look at quantity. If you just wanna look at quality and eating real whole foods, you don't need to do any of these things. Chronometer, okay. I use one called Chronometer. It has a free version. You can pay for like an ad free version if you want. Um, I've also used my Fitness Pal in the past, also free, it probably has a paid version. These two are awesome mainly because they've got huge databases of food. Like pretty much anything you eat, you can probably find it in one of those apps. Does anybody use anything different? I know there are other ones out there like Macro Tracker, you just search online. Um, but these are two good ones. So number one, get an app. Um, other things you need are if you're gonna start quantifying your food, I recommend buying just an inexpensive food scale. I think I got mine for like seven bucks on Amazon. Um, so you can get one really cheap. And then um, measuring cups and spoons. And with those few things, you can get started. Now, I have two recommendations for places to start. You could, this is an and or, you can do either one of these. One would be just starting to look at the quality of your food. Like, are you eating protein, carbs, and fat every day? Are you eating mostly real whole foods? So like things that are not, things that are perishable, um, things that don't come in like a package and that will last in your, in your home for many, many moons. That's one place to start. The other, or in addition to, this can be hugely eye-opening for people, um, is just to make no changes at all to what you're eating, but just to track it. Track it for two to three weeks. Um, what that could give you is your average caloric intake um, over the course of a week. So two to three weeks, it would simply be eating the same diet that you are eating now, plug it into your app when you eat, and just average it out. See, am I at 2,000 calories a day on average? Am I more than that? Am I less than that? Um, you can also start looking at, like these apps will spit out for you, how much protein are you getting? How much carbohydrate? and how much fat, like what percentage of your daily intake comes from each one of these macronutrients. It can be, it's just knowledge about you and about what you eat on average, but it is hugely eye-opening. Um, I'll leave it at that. So this is a, I'll say it's easy. This is not easy, it's simple. It's not necessarily easy. Um, Having a food scale, if you eat at home a lot, this is much simpler than if you eat out, but there are ways, um, and I'll send out some resources after this if you guys would like them, where if you're eating somewhere, it's like, okay, a palm-sized piece of protein is about four ounces, so you can eyeball it, you can look at your carbohydrates and your fat, and you can like take restaurant foods and start to plug them in and get pretty close. Um, so there's some eyeball methods. But if you're at home, it could be as simple as Instead of going whatever you're cooking to plate to mouth, just having your plate sitting on a scale, you're cooking your chicken, you take it out of the pan, you stick it on the scale and you go, oh cool, that was 150 grams of protein or of chicken, log it, then put it in your mouth. It's one extra step. Cool? Okay. So this is really my recommendation of where to start if you wanna start doing something. Um, do a baseline for two to three weeks. At the end of that, you're gonna wanna look at your macro breakdown and also your average caloric intake per day. And that gives you a good starting point. That gives you a really good starting point. Um, from that, 
you can make some choices. You kind of do this evaluation technique, like how do I look, how do I feel, how's my performance, is there something I want to change? And then you start making some tweaks to whatever you're doing. And that could be as simple as you came up with your average calories per day. I'm just going to use a random number, like they say for women, around 2,000 is average. Um, 2,000 calories per day. Maybe your goal is to apply that 40, 30, 30 ratio to your 2,000 calories. So maybe you're going to try to get 40% from carbohydrate, 30% from protein, and 30% from fat. That's pretty aggressive if you're like, I don't know. It could be, I'm going to just keep my average calories per day, and I'm going to try to eat more fruits and vegetables. But I'm going to put a number on it. I'm going to try to eat 800 grams by weight of fruits and veggies per day. Everything else you eat that day? your call. So these are just some simple strategies that you can put into practice. I need to trademark this. This is like my mentor from CrossFit from many years ago has a nutrition um, business and she's got a challenge called the 800 gram challenge and it's trademarked so I'll TM it. Um, and, her, and this challenge is simply that the only thing you're weighing and measuring are your fruits and vegetables they could be fresh, they can be frozen, they could be canned, whatever. But when you eat them, you measure it, and your only goal in terms of the quantity is that you're trying to get 800 grams of fruits and vegetables per day. You control everything else that you eat. And she's seen, people have seen great success with that. We don't need enough fruits and vegetables. It's a pretty simple thing to start with. Um, I have other strategies, but I don't want to overwhelm with them unless you guys want them. Is it helpful to have a list of things to try? OK, all right. So some of the, um, my first, let me just, I don't like this is getting cluttered to me. OK, my first recommendation is simply do that baseline. It's super eye-opening um, just to figure out what you're eating on average every day. That's my recommendation number one. My recommendation number two is I would go with this. Eat 800 grams. I'm going to just put it up here. Challenge TM. Eat 800 grams of fruits and vegetables by weight every day. You own the rest. That's option number two. Option number three is to track only your protein. So this is carbohydrate tracking. This one will be protein. 0.7 grams per pound of body weight of protein per day. This would get you, this is considered like adequate protein um, for most humans. So you take whatever you weigh, you times it by 0.7, that is the number of grams of protein that you are trying to eat per day. That's another option. So that'll focus on protein. And then I would say my option number four would be adding a little to this. If you do these two things, you are going to be in a great shape. So it would be combining those two things, trying to get 800 grams of fruits and veggies per day, plus this protein target. So you're doing both. Those are places I would start. So yes. First is, what is for protein? Let's put you on like protein powder or these supplements that people use. Is that, it's not like whole food? It's not. If you're, so what I would say is if you're struggling to get, like if you're trying to hit a protein target and you're struggling to do that with real whole foods, then using protein powders to fill that need is totally acceptable. 
it's also, um, Eli, it's really like sliding scale. Like it's not the most optimal. Um, so as much as you can get it through real Whole Foods, try to do that. But nothing wrong with trying it out as well to hit the number. Totally. So a lot of those things go into the bucket of like when we're so far down the scale that we're really trying to optimize, like step number one, let's try to cut out processed foods and added sugar. If we haven't done that yet, I don't really care much about when you're eating um, or intermittent fasting, et cetera, et cetera. Let's try to get quality in line, number one. Then let's try to get quantity in line, number two. And then we can start applying things like intermittent fasting and any other like strategy that you want to add on to that. And then um, on shopping, so because I've I heard before, like, you know, do the perimeter. Yeah. So I started doing that more. But sometimes I notice that, like, I just don't eat the vegetables fast enough and they just, like, die. So do you guys, like, recommend, like, frozen vegetables? Totally. Vegetables? Okay, no, yes. Like, the only thing to look at with frozen is like make sure there's no like added stuff in them. It's true. Actually, the the woman I I mentioned, my mentor, like she delves into all the research, and that is actually true. Like someone. So nothing wrong with frozen vegetables. The only thing to look at is like, sometimes they'll add sugar. Just look at the ingredients. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you have to ever, like, these are all kind of personal preferences, like what fits within your budget and your lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. But fresh versus frozen, personal call. Totally. Canned. I mean, you can do canned, just make sure they're like not in syrup and stuff like that. Um, I do want to put up, actually, let me pause there. What other questions do you guys have? Because I want to make sure we have time for that. What Laura. About, like, cheating? Ah, oh, cheating. Love gummy bears. Totally. <laughs> Eat it. Like, here's the thing, and I'm not joking when I say, like, you have to, whatever you choose to do with your nutrition, um, you need to be able to do, ideally for the rest of your life, but I'm not kidding when I say, like, you need to see, see yourself doing this for a year. Like, if you do something so extreme, and so everyone's different. Some people are like, cold turkey, I'm cutting out all the sugar, I'm cleaning out my entire house, no more processed foods, and that works for them. And some people are like, I'm just gonna focus on breakfast. Like, I'm gonna try to eat real whole foods for breakfast five days a week, and that's where I'm going to start. Uh, like, Rob and I are very, like, he eats well, but we are very different. Like, I know for myself, after a, over a decade of this, that if I cheat on certain things, it is a slippery slope, and I will never stop. And so there are things that I literally will not eat. And there are things that I'm like, you can't bring that in the house. Like, we cannot have jars of peanut butter in my house because I will sit there with a spoon and make myself sick. And so I've learned over many years, like, Saturday treat means I go to New Leaf, I get a small little container because I know I'm going to eat the whole thing. Like, so whatever I get is getting eaten. Whereas he can have sweets in the house and eat a couple a night and be fine with it. So, like, he's a different human than I am, and so you have to figure out how that works for you. Other questions? Ashlyn. It depends on the person. Like, some people are really attuned, and they can keep their own quantity in control with intuitive eating. If I let myself eat the things that I told myself I wanted to eat. Like, I need the parameter of, I weigh and measure. And when I, when I eat at home, I still do it. He's probably sick of it. I've done it for a decade. Like, I can eyeball stuff and be like, that's 
five ounces of chicken. Like I know it and I'm within like 0.1 of, you know, um, but I need that type of structure for myself um, and other people don't, like other people have that ability. Um, that actually gives rise to like a couple just, I think there are three basic principles that I think are important for like us to understand when we're thinking about nutrition. So I'll just write them up here. Um, the quality of your food, like we've talked about real whole foods is gonna be indicative of your health. Nobody wants to hear this, but the quantity of your food calorically is what's going to determine your body weight. So like no matter what you're eating, if you're eating more calories than your body needs, even if they're like the, ex the most perfect foods you can come up with and your body weight is going up, guess what? You're eating more calories than you need. Um, body weight. Yeah, but this next piece, I'll get to that. And then the quantity of your foods in terms of your macronutrient breakdown, that determines your body composition. So that's like your muscle to fat ratio. Um, and those are just principles. Like these things will change over the course of our lives. We need less calories as we age. It sucks. I hate it. I don't like it at all. But like your body weight starts creeping up. Guess what? I can't tell you anything else except for that you're eating more calories than your body needs, and that's what's happening. If you're gaining fat but not muscle, like if you're measuring those things, we should look at your macronutrient breakdown. Like, are you getting enough protein? And every human's a little different on terms of like more carbs, less carbs, more fat, less fat. Like that's different, so that's an experiment that you have to do for yourself, which is why this quantification and some tracking is really helpful. Because if we don't have that data, we don't know where to make tweaks when things aren't going the way you want them to go. Does that make sense? You can get those things measured. I mean, you can go to like, um, there's things like bod pods, uh, DEXA scans, like you can go to labs and find these pay to get those things done. Like you can do the caliper pinch test. None of them are super accurate, Eli. If it's something you wanna measure, just use the same method over time. You're looking for trends. Again, I honestly, for myself, I look in the mirror and I'm like, how do my clothes fit? Cause I weigh more uh, in pounds than I did when I started CrossFit, but um, my body composition is incredibly different than what it was. Question. So this is all like relative to CrossFit, but what about if your activity level mm -hmm. lower than you know, what occurs here? Like, I just don't have the data on it. I'm not doing so this, this is CrossFit's prescription, but it really applies doesn't really matter. So the same principles will apply. We'd still always recommend quality foods for health. Um, if you're worried, if you're considering body weight or body comp, those might adjust. Like if your training goes up and you lose weight, you're like, okay, well, I need more calories. My activity level has increased. Similarly, if your activity level drops because you're not working out as much, then and your body weight creeps up, you need less calories. So the same principles apply whether you're doing CrossFit or not doing CrossFit. Yeah, Question? My recommendation, none of those are super accurate. Okay. None of this is. And all of it really is just looking for trends. Like even if you're tracking your calories, it's not gonna be super accurate, but just use the same chicken. Like when you enter chicken, enter the same chicken every time. Um, so my recommendation is just to don't log your exercise, like just log your food. Cause that's gonna just, it's gonna standardize over the course of time, especially when we're looking over two to three weeks. Um, and if you're starving or you're losing weight, you need more calories. And if you're staying constant, guess what? We've hit homeostasis. And if you're gaining weight, you're eating too much. 
like those are all the things that are objective measures that you can use. All right, I'm trying to keep it to an hour, but I'm happy to answer if there are any other questions. That's my, that is my tactic. That's literally what I do. Yeah. Like I account for my, my liquid calories by cutting down on my food calories yeah. and carbohydrates yeah. on that day. That's a strategy that works for me. Um, just be really aware with alcohol, like log it for sure. It's a carbohydrate log. It's gonna count as a carbohydrate um, for the most part. And they're calorically dense um, and there are, better choices, I would say, than in terms of carbohydrate load. Like if you stick with wine generally, like not sweet wine, dry wine, clear liquors. Like if, if you were to ask a CrossFit person, like what's the best alcohol to drink? Should be none, but like clear. I mean, I look back at stuff that like my grandparents did and I'm like, they were so right. And then we started eating margarine and all this crap. Like, why did we do that? We should have just gone back to growing our own food in the garden. It all comes full circle, right? Drink the vodka, grow your own food or go to the farmer's market, eat real whole foods. Um, don't eat too much and you're gonna do great. You guys are all here. So now we're really just talking about like tweaks, right? Like little tweaks that we can just to make ourselves a little more healthy. Okay, that's all I have for you. We, this is the app. Um, can you, yeah, I was gonna say, if you email info at CrossFit Santa Cruz, uh, we can get you an account set up. And that goes for anyone. Uh, this is the workout tracking app and um, we load our workouts in there, which makes it super easy. Um, so if you are interested in getting an account through CrossFit Santa Cruz, just email info at CrossFitSantaCruz.com and we'll set you up with that. And then um, if, is everyone okay with me emailing them that is here? Basically, if you're not okay with me emailing you, come talk to me afterwards. Otherwise, I will send out, I have a little packet of like notes and stuff that has like all these resources and things um, so that you have it as a reference. I'll send that out afterwards as well. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming.